Welcome. Here is the question number seven. Uh, a light inextensible uh, string passes over a smooth pulley and carries masses 4 kg and 3 kg at its ends. So if the masses are released from rest, we have to find the acceleration and the speed after 3 seconds. So this is a mechanic and a dynamics uh, motion. So let's see if we can make a sketch. Uh, can I make a sketch of what the pulley will be? And both are having extens inextensible uh, string. So let's see. Uh, let me come down a bit. So at this point, we have the mass. We have the width. Let's see, we have the mass. We have the width. Your thought will be why is one uh, width lower than the other? The masses are different. The bigger mass will definitely take a downward movement. So if that is the case, we can see that uh, here there will be an extension or tension, sorry. So there's going to be a tension here pulling the, the weight upward. There will be a tension here also pulling the weight upward. And this is our 3 kg and this is our 4 kg because 4 kg will move downward. So let's say for the mass here, yeah, the weight is going to move it down. So if I have the weight of the first, which is also going to be W1, then here the weight will be M2G with this word W2. Remember the acceleration here is going to be moving downward, and the acceleration here is going to move forward, upward. Why? Because this is uh, if it is released, that is if the body is what released. So this is what we can picture of that pulley. Since it is smooth as it is released, they are all going to take the same speed. The speed that this is moving up will be the same speed that this is going to move down. So the acceleration is going to be a common acceleration. So we need to know the net force that each of them are going to be applying. So what do we do as the first uh, calculation? Let's look at their, their weight. Uh, let's see, is it a weight or accelerate uh, the force of gravity acting on the two bodies? So let me take it as the first. If I say A, that would be uh, let me just say a star. So weight on uh, 4 kg mass, right? If I'm going to find the weight, the weight is going to be uh, let me just say. W1 is going to be the mass 1 times what? The gravity, which is here, uh, here. And what is the mass? In this case, the mass is going to be 4 times this, where the G is the force of gravity. Let's hold on to that. Then, if I am picking that, the body here is going to move. Uh, let me use this. I believe we understand that means downward. So that is a downward movement. We also need to find the tension. We can see that the tension here is moving upward. Here is also moving upward. So both cases, the tension will be acting what? Upward. That becomes the upward forces. Then uh, let's take the weight on the second one. So let's see. Weight on the 3 kg mass. With in this case, the 3 kg will be moving in the direction of the acceleration. So that is upward word, uh, movement. So if that is the case, your weight will be equal to mass 2 times this, which is 3 times what? G. So we just label this as, okay, let's leave that. So since the tensions are going to be the same, they are all going to be upward movement. What do we do? Let's find the net force where we are going to apply the Newton's second law, which is talking about the, the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the net force acting on the body and inversely proportional to what? The mass of the body. So if I can pick the acceleration directly proportional to the force, inversely proportional to what? Uh, the mass. 
So this can be taken as the net force equals to the mass times what? Acceleration. We are going to apply this. The mass of the body is known. It is the acceleration we are interested in. So we can think about what? The net force. The total force acting on that body. Then we can move on from there. So here, if I am going to look at the net force, let's say the net force the net force acting on what? The 4 kg what? Mass. Look at this. The force here moving downward and this is what? Moving upward. When the body is released, the body will not be moving in the direction of T, but rather in what? Direction of what? The W, meaning W is going to be a lot bigger. The W is going to be bigger than the tension. So if I subtract the, the tension from this, I'll get the net force. So in this case, I can pick this as, um, let's say, M1G minus tension equals to the mass 1 times the common acceleration, which is the net force we are looking for by the second uh, Newton's law. All right, so this is what we are going to have. But we can see that we already know what the mg here is as four. We also know what the, uh, the mass is. So it is the acceleration that we are left to, to find. So by substitution, we can easily, okay, let's just put here, what do we have there? Four g minus t equals to, uh, 4a, right? I can pick that as my first equation. So what is next? Let's look at the net force. I think I'm taking this a bit slow for you to understand. I am here to uh, start the, the tutorial on the dynamics. We finished with the mechanic static, I think about 40 something episodes. We are here to pick the episode comprehensive definition of what dynamic with each episode. So net force acting on the 3G, which is the, 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 the mass 3. Here, tension up, mass down. You can see when the body is released from rest, the mass of this is going to be moving upward with the uh, acceleration. So it means the tension is going to be a lot bigger than what the weight of the body is or the gravitational pull. Of the body so in this case we have the tension bigger than the m2g which now give us the actual net force so this is a net force we are looking for so by extension t will be minus 3 q uh, g equals to 3 word a where a is the as common acceleration of the two bodies. So looking at this, we have two equations that we can solve simultaneously. So if you are solving simultaneously, I am going to perform subtraction. So let's say I have subtraction, will it work? I'm having negative t, positive t. So let me add equation one plus what? Equation two. When I add the t and the t here will cancel. So I should be left with 4g in this case, minus 3g, right? And that will be giving us, uh, it's a subtraction, right? So 4 plus 3. So I'll be having g equals to 7 word a. But in this case, I can easily say that I can substitute this with each uh, value. So I will divide by 7. So acceleration is going to be the g. Let me just see. But G is going to be 9.8 meter per second square. That becomes uh, G as 9.8 divided by what? 7. Let's see the value of that on our calculator. And if we do that, we should be having 1.4 meter per second word square. So we can conclude and say that the acceleration of the two masses is going to be 1.4 meter per second square. Both are going to have the same acceleration because the pulley is what? Smooth. And the string is also inextensible. It is not having tension. Uh, extension. It's not like a spring. 
right? So that maybe the mass here being bigger will have extended it more than this one, but it is inextensible. So masses, um, the acceleration become what? The same. All right. Now let's look at the second part of the question. We're looking for the speed. If we still look at the second law of uh, Newton's, Newton's second law, which we still have as the one we have from here, we can still look at the acceleration of the body, which is the change in velocity over what? Time taken. If I look at this, I am going to have the velocities, which is going to be what I'm looking for as the speed. Then this is the initial velocity, the starting point, which will always be zero. So I can look at this or look at the motion loss equations, which by a multiplication, V will be equal to U plus what? 80, right away from here. So I can also use this to find the, the velocities, yeah, the speed after three seconds. So after three seconds, they all have to have the same speed if we look at this carefully. So let's clear some parts and continue with that. So we have the representation of the first one. The second one, so we are going to have using the second law equation here, V equals to U plus AT, since we know the acceleration, we are having the time after three seconds. We can say that uh, the initial velocity, right, U is going to be zero. When the body is yet to be released, the velocity is going to be zero. So we want to know the speed. So for the 4 kg, we are going to have the speed equals to zero plus the acceleration 1.4 times 3 what? seconds. And you see this is going to be 3, this is going to be 1.2, so we have 4, 4.2, right? And uh, what will be the unit? That will be meter per what? Seconds. All right, let's see if we have for the 3 kg, velocity is going to be 0 plus 1.43, which will still give us what? 4.2 meter per what? Seconds. So we can see that the speed, so the speed after 3 seconds is going to be 4.2 meter per second in the two cases, right? Because the pulley is smooth and the string is what? Inextensible. I guess the concept to this is also clear. I think my voice is a little, uh, down a bit on this. I have a little cold, so I think that also plays to the advantage that I will be able to explain it to your understanding. If you like, share it. If you find it educative, subscribe to the channel and come back for question number eight.